lounge in the sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and back with me, my awesome co-host Manny. We're going to continue our read through of Preacher. We didn't initially set out to do this, but after talking right. Preacher Volume One, we, we kind of knew that we had to because we knew we were both going to end up wanting to read the whole series. So I'm super stoked to talk Volume Two until the end of the world. I haven't read the entire series multiple times. This was one I've read multiple times, and I, I'm pretty sure this is one of my favorite volumes it's either it's either tied for the first the favorite volume or it's like right up there like the first story arc in this one is solid. oh dude yeah it's it's it, it it might be my it might be my favorite I, I it feels like it's my favorite now um only because i i guess i just read it you know but it's it's one that i think is might be the most important in a in a strange way because it sets so much foundation and like gives you so much of what like what jesse is and like what and has a very huge impact on the story and and gives you a lot of the information you need to understand like who jesse really is well yeah i definitely like this you know what we get in volume one with like little hints at the past why did jesse leave tulip you get that here why yeah. is jesse a, a minister you get that here a preacher you get that here right like yeah and just seeing what made him who he is you wouldn't even have guessed he hit like you from what you get in volume one you couldn't even imagine what he went through in uh -huh. his life you know because most people that go through what he went through what is depicted with his childhood i mean i i mean i i don't know i don't think they yeah, would I mean, it's, it's, as it's, well together as he as he yeah is. i mean it's a childhood full of abuse and trauma like yeah. severe you know yeah like i mean i don't even think that's it doesn't even come close i mean yeah just i mean i I'm kind of jumping ahead, but just like you getting locked in a getting locked in a fucking coffin and put in like as a punishment and put into the fucking river. Yeah, like, that's insane, dude. For days yeah. like that's yeah. just like, how do you not Pissing lose your and shitting yourself? Yeah, and, you know, how, like... how do you not lose your mind? You know, like the way he was. I don't know. I just I think it's a testament and it shows like how strong he is. And it kind uh -huh. of and also we, we kind of see the beginnings of him seeing uh john wayne right like yes. coming to him yeah we get to see that like what we talked about in volume one and kind of almost being like a, a guardian angel type figure but not not a nice guardian angel like kind of like a little kind of talks a little shit you know like kind of telling yeah. him to like man up you know not up or yeah. shut up you know kind of deal the, I, I would say it's like an accurate depiction of, of what john wayne probably was like you know like or at least the characters he's and it's and it's weird because it's like is is he really seeing that in his mind? Like what, how did his mind break? And that was his way of dealing with the trauma. That's what, that's how I kind of take it. But he Same. still continues yeah. to see him as an adult. And is he still dealing with trauma or is this just like his mind? Is. Too. It's like a defense yeah. mechanism almost, yeah. you know, if something gets a little hard, that's what he sees. You know what it reminds me of is, um, I don't know if you've seen True Romance, like the, I haven't Slater, seen it. No. I know the movie, with, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it was it was written by Quentin Tarantino. Like in that movie, Christian Slater's character sees Elvis in the very same way that that Jesse sees John Wayne in this. To the point where I wonder if one influenced the other. I'd have to find out what 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 came first. But it's very it's used very similar. Look it up. And, right uh, now. I'm gonna look it up right now. I want to see. Oh, True Romance came out in '93, so that precedes this, which means. Maybe it, it could, was an influence. Maybe. And I mean, I think Tarantino was probably an influence on Ennis and on and on this book because of like, you know, you got the humor and the ultra violence and, and of the excellent dialogue. So I mean maybe, but that's probably a better a question better served for Garth than any one of us. I know dude, I would love to ask him because like I I'd have to think like Tarantino, when he comes out with reservoir dogs, yeah, like he's I mean, gotta be He's got to be a huge influence on on just like that type of storytelling, and as, especially if you're a writer, or even just like the genres that he's using and yeah. he's kind of bringing into the forefront that maybe wasn't as prevalent at that time. I don't know. I was a kid when those movies came out. I mean, Pulp Fiction was '94. I was seven, so I mean, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, yeah. I love, I love seeing his whole backstory like i think like you said this probably is the most important arc so much information is put within that first because mm -hmm. this this volume that we're talking about i think it covers 10 issues so i'm yeah. i think it's i think it's about five issues per arc 
um, maybe six and four. I don't, I don't know the exact number, but um, you, you learn about his mom and his whole family. They're the, like redneck to the core. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you want a quick recap, I mean, uh, volume one ended with uh, Jesse and Tulip uh, partying with Cassidy and, you know, they're going their separate ways. And uh, I think they were heading to, to, they were heading West, which is, you know, kind of like, again, yeah. the theme of the whole damn thing. But uh, when this volume starts, uh, Jesse and Tulip stop uh, at a bar to sort of uh, put an end to Tulip's like situation with the gangster that she owed money to, that she was going out to do hits for to sort of make up for the money she was lent. Yeah. And, uh, as, and as pure happenstance and coincidence, they run into two people from Jesse's past, Jody and, um, man, what's his name? Uh, TC, uh, TC, right? Yeah, yeah TC. Who are sort of like Jesse's grandma's like little henchmen who've been looking for Jesse since he left, and uh, it all goes to fucking hell. Yeah. Also, um, also the at the end of volume one, remember that FBI or that cop said the FBI right. was looking for him, his grandma was asking for him. So you also we that's also right. get that hand. You, you also meet the grandma. Yeah. So you that's really how it starts. And uh, one thing I loved about this uh, this arc especially is how it jumps around in time. Like you know yes. you get like. Yeah. It, you get it, it starts with like it starts with a great scene with with Jesse's father getting fucking killed. <laughs> Look at dude, that, I mean, dude. It's, Look it's at such it. a powerful page. It's such a powerful page, and like what a, the coloring, what a, the coloring by Hollingsworth in this page is amazing. Like immediately, you wouldn't even need the the narrative boxes to know that this is a flashback because it's got like that sort of sepia tone to it, and it immediately puts you in the past. Then it jumps. To now, and again, an amazing fucking panel, like the anger and the emotion in Jesse's face. The writing, though, you vicious, oh, dude, yeah, murder, you vicious, murdering, fucked up, shit eating, hateful, cock sucking, evil tyrant, bitch of a whore from hell. Like, like, how much more descriptive could you get? You know, and you don't yeah. even know who he's talking about. It's still, you don't even know who he's no. talking about at this point. Yeah, and you, and then it, you know, you get a little bit, and then it jumps to earlier that morning so you've had three time jumps and what it what that at least to me creates is like this this tension right away you know where you're like where where are we what's going on what are we going to see you know so it preacher is very good about just thrusting you into these situations but in a way where you're not confused but you're engaged i guess is the best way to say it and i, I gotta say dude dylan is killing it with these facial expressions i mean like oh, yeah that that's a such an intense like you can, it's like, it, it's such a close up and like, look at Jesse's eyes. Like you can actually read the anger on them, you know, like those look are little the, like in the strands of hair, like just like yeah. down to he's sweaty and pissed and tired. And like, you can tell that's a man that's been through some shit in the last few hours, you know? And like, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah. I love the way they build then, the tension too. Like you're just, you don't even meet her. Like you just get the hand. Right. And like, you yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. And like, we talked about Tarantino, you talked about time jumps. That's exactly what he does. You're constantly yeah. going through. Uh, he's got to be influenced. There's no way. Yeah, he's got to be. There's no way that he's not. At least a little bit, you know, a, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and, just uh, go ahead. Yeah, you get a you get a back you get a little bit of a back background on Tulip and you know why she was trying to kill those mobsters in Volume One and and uh, and, and like I said earlier, I mentioned Jody and TC and uh, what a fucking villain. Uh, specifically Jody is, man. I mean, he's a badass in his own right, which, I mean, right away you can tell that this man is as much of a badass as Jesse, if not maybe even more. You know, like, yeah, TC is a vile human being. Like, don't get me wrong. He's a disgusting... like Probably one of the worst. Person. Yeah. Yeah. But is he a badass? Yeah, in the sense that, like, he's extremely dangerous. There's a line when when Jesse is, uh, you know, when him and Tulip are tied up and, the, you know, grandma gives him, I love what she says. She's like, because grandma loves you, I will give you a night with your girl. And then in the morning, Jody's going to shoot her through the fucking head. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, it's such a great line. Yeah. So, yeah, Tulip and Jesse are tied up in this room together. And he finally tells her what happened in, 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 in Angelville and what happened with him. The way he described uh, Jody is great. He says like there's a real intelligence in his eyes, and I'm like, what a what an what a intelligent you know way to describe Jody because yeah, Jody is this fucking vicious redneck, but he's not stupid at 
all. You know what I mean? No. Like he's yeah, that's what he makes him. So he that's what makes him, him so dangerous. Yeah, dude. yeah, that's what makes him so dangerous, man. Like he's like yeah. T T C is your typical like inbred fucking literally a chicken fucking red redneck. You know what I mean? Like like yeah. it, it comes up several times and you actually literally see him fuck a chicken and remember when he cuts a slit in the fish and puts it on his dick. I mean like it's it's. If, if, Anything uh, we hold, should dude. say that if you're if you're if you're easily offended or faint of heart, preacher might not be the title for you. Yeah, but but because it has a very vulgar sense of humor, but there's nothing funny about Jody at all. No, like he's, I think he's dangerous and cunning, and uh, like you said, he tracks Jesse down, dude. I mean, he's he's very smart. He might not be educated because he's fucking you know at heart he is an ignorant redneck. But he is very smart. And like I one thing I also loved was like until now we've seen Jesse be afraid of no one. Jesse wasn't even afraid of the saint of killers. But yeah. when he sees Jody, he freaks the fuck out, dude. I know, dude. Like, I mean, I I mean, he, I guess you could say this is his intro, is the page one, but for me, yeah. this is like the real intro to this villain. Yeah, and what a way the door and just, like the look at that. Holy dude, shit. Yeah. And then and then you get Jody's face. Look at that smug that look. Smirk. The and way the way that... he immediately tells Tulip, like, just do what he says. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we haven't seen Jesse scared yet. I just this realized is, that, too. This is what's crazy, too, is, look, he tells him to drop the gun, and then you go to the next page, and then you really start to see it. Like, look at the close-up of his smirk, knowing that, because, so you obviously know that he knows that Jesse has the word of God, Yeah, but it doesn't work on him. I, yeah, I love that that line. Just, you want to try that again, boy? You know what I mean. And the way he calls him boy, he, I noticed something. He never calls him Jesse. Always yeah. calls him boy. Yeah, because it's, it's a like, way of demeaning it, him. Exactly, it's a way of demeaning him and sort of making Jesse regress into that scared little boy we saw on the first page who watched his father get murdered by this fucking animal of a human being. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, Jody is, is. I mean, we we have yet to meet. Star in 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 the books, you know, we're gonna get to him eventually. Yeah, who you know you might say is is the real quote unquote villain. I'm probably not so. in the in the book too. Is, yeah, is the villain too? But is. Jesse is never really afraid of Star. Not like he is of Jody, you know? because Jody's taken so much from him. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a spoiler, but Jody even he does kill Tulip in this. She's brought back by God, but I mean, Jody has destroyed everything that Jesse has ever loved. You know. And like that fear is is shown through the writing and Dylan's artwork. Were like, I mean, again, like look at even even like this little panel. I'll, I'll I'll I can close it up because I have it on electronically. When okay. Jody is just killing this guy, like look at Jesse's face. Like, yeah, it's a small drawing, but it's just like Jesse's like shit, shit. You know what I mean? Like, you never see Jesse's eyes round with fear, and like there's multiple instances. What about this, this one too, dude? Like, look at that. Like, just yeah. the look of like. He's defeated. You could, I mean, like, yeah, like defeated said, is a good word for it. We had a whole first volume where he doesn't ever, ever show signs of, of like being scared of anything. And then, just like I said, he walks up to the scene of killers, like, like, and fucking, because I, I mean, part of it is a confidence of having the word of God, but Jesse is also a badass himself. And like, you could tell that, like, 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 he's not afraid. Like, like, and speaking of, like, I want, you know, I'm probably rambling here, but, but, you know, it makes sense. We're talking about the same book. Um, I love um, the three things that Jesse's father says to him, which I think are a core. I'm paraphrasing here, paraphrasing here, but he says like, um, "Never, never, never judge a person by how they look. Don't take any shit off of fools." And uh, the last one is like, "You've got to be a good guy because the world has too many of the bad." And yeah. like those things really are like the core of Jesse. Like you know, like he doesn't judge people. Remember in the first volume when he judged Cassidy for like being a vampire, he felt bad about it. He's like, yeah. I called him an abomination. Like, I, I should have known better. You know what I mean? That's not who he showed to me. Like, like, like Jesse is a very complex character. And you start to see that here because um, he was very influenced by his father's words, like, like his mom. And even Jody, in a weird way, had his imprint put on Jesse. And like, Jesse wouldn't be who he is without Jody. That's what makes Jody so fascinating because, um, you know, at the end, when Jody and Jesse have their final fight and... I love that scene where Jesse finally, the well, like you mentioned earlier, Jody obviously knew that um, Jesse had the word of God. And you find out because God came to uh, Angelville, approached Jesse's grandmother and told him, told them everything. 
if you get Jesse back, I'll make sure. You know what I mean? God's basically a conniving little like fucking like like planner. So he's yeah. making deals with Jesse's grandmother, and he says, "I promise you that his power won't work on you." You know, but after a minute, it does. And then there's that scene, the final fight between Jody and Jesse, where they're facing off each other, and and I love that Jody says. Uh, Jesse says, you know, I could use that. I could use a word on you and make you eat that fucking gun. And Jody says, yeah, I know, but you're not, are you? And, Je and Jesse's just like, nope, because he wants to kill him with his own yeah. fucking hands, like yeah. he said. Yeah. And I love that Jody says, there's hope for you yet, boy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know. It is a great moment. And like this, like Jody very well could have gone on to be a continued problem for Jesse. But to only yes. get him in terms of like building the backstory and then just getting Jesse to the next step, you know what I mean? Almost making him stronger. It's like, he's almost, I don't want to say leveling up, but he is, he's able to, he's able to shed something from his past now, like get yes. a sense of closure. That's a good way to put it, man. Very you know? good, good, good way to put it. And yeah. then, you know, like, and get rid of this evil bitch. Look at her, dude. Yeah, Look dude. Yeah. She looks like a fucking monster, like a zombie, you know? And she's got to be like, like in her over a hundred years old, yeah, over a hundred years old. Because you talk about this whole family and how you know, like, they're all about God and all about this, and like the women in the family are only meant for breeding and shit, which is like, yeah, it, it's crazy. that old Bible, Old Testament kind of stuff, where you know, where you, you know, like, uh, like, uh, I grew up having to take a, a lot of like Catholic courses, so like, I read a lot of the Bible, and like, the Bible had all these people, you know, Abraham was supposed to be like 200 years old and like, yeah, yeah. had kids well into his old age, like. There's elements of that in 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 the in the in the family, yes. and it's Marie yeah. because we gotta we gotta do mention Custer is the last name of Jesse's father, not his mother. So yeah. you know that we learned that too, and we realize that he does that for a reason because he wants to sort of divorce himself from his mother's line, which you know the, the, the I don't want to forget people... this this cover is oh, fucking dude. haunting. It's haunting, dude. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, it is. Uh, I, I and you know the the second issue I want to talk about it too before we forget. Um, I love how his the parents meet, right? Like yes. his dad is a vet; he was fighting in Vietnam, right? Yeah. The mom is the daughter of that evil bitch, and but the reason that the age difference is so high is because she had her when she's like in her late fifties or something, I, yes. I believe, and she ran away. She and she finds him. She fucking spits in his face because she's fell in crew with like these like hippies and stuff and gets to war. But then they they end up bonding and they it's yeah. all it's like a it's like an instant connection right they fall in love and they only have a short while it, with each it other. It also parallels it parallels a bit the uh, the origin of Genesis, who was a product of the the bond between an angel and a demon who also fell in love. So like there's that going on too. Yeah, you know, and yeah. so like there's multiple layers and parallels. So like it makes sense. You also start to see like that's probably a reason. And this is something I only realize now actually is like why. Genesis chose to bond with Jesse, probably saw like a kinship in him, you know, like this human was also a product of these two different sort of forces, these two people from different, you know, worlds creating something I new. Think you about know? That. Like, That's, that makes yeah, a lot no, of sense. I, I, I had not noticed that until, until literally right now. That's you know? the best part about reading books multiple times, man, is you get yeah. new experiences. I've, I've talked about that so many times. Like, and Preacher you know, has like, that. Yeah. It's, it's so layered, man. Yeah, and uh, obviously the first time you read it, you're so caught up in the action and violence and humor of it all. But like, uh, when you start reading it, which is why I'm glad we're doing these these read throughs again, you start to see that there's so much. It's such layered writing, man, and it's it's it, there's a reason I I think I told you maybe in the first video that this is my favorite comic book of all time. Yeah, and yeah. I mean it's becoming even more clear as I read it. Yeah, I mean I think that like if. If you get if you get through this arc, the third arc, I would say this is right, and you don't yes. fall in love with the book by then, like I don't know what else is gonna pull you in. This I think solidified it as like one of the best series of all time to me, and especially yeah. especially like a Vertigo perennial. Like it, this is a book that like yes can always be in print. You know, and you talk we talked about like how much Jody took away. So obviously he kills his dad in front of him. That's how the what issue is it? I guess issue eight. I think. Whatever the first issue in this trade um, opens up, you don't even find out how the mom dies. You just know she gets killed, right? Yeah. And you find out like how it got to that point in terms of like the the evil grandma just like, oh yeah, I don't need you anymore. You've given me what I need. You gave me an heir, and that, yeah. that's all she looked at her like, just something to get the heir. 
because Jody and TC go after go looking for her. And as they're about to fucking kill uh Jesse's dad, they realize, oh shit, they had she had a kid with him. And then they pull them back and they mm-hmm. have to move back to the house and they have to start going to the fucking church, start teaching uh Jesse the lessons on how to become a preacher. And in that time, he meets a friend, Billy Bob, who's like, you know, <laughs> an, it, talk about inbred. The dude's only got one eye. Oh, he talks about like marrying his sister, and like that's the only good thing he has in his life once yeah. his parents get taken from him. Right. And like, I, I love that detail too that he's friends with Billy Bob because it, it shows like that Jesse has really taken what his father said to him about not judging people by where they look because exactly at, you know, at a glance, Billy Bob is like, Yeah, he's inbred and like he might not be the smartest. But you start to see that Jesse really does sort of try to see the good in people. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that you know that that's some that's that lesson that his father taught him, which is it it you know it, it mirrors his relationship with Cassidy. Yeah, I think it too. It's like so look takes his dog, and I love that this this is oh, this is the yeah, first this thing. is where Jesse first gets punished. His dog yeah. gets killed, and then then he calls him a dirty he calls Jody a dirty fucker. And his grandma hears, and she's like, "Oh hell no, dude!" And that's yeah. when he gets locked in this fucking goddamn box. It's just like, and as he and I love the I love the parallel because he's like, does he's talking to Tulip? This is him telling Tulip what happened. His story, yeah. you know. And look at that. And then as and when they're sitting there like tied up, there's the there's the chicken scene you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so funny. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, he calls him a chicken, the slut and shit. It's so fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, and then like Jesse's a little older now and then he kicks DC, calls him a cocksucker and then he gets locked in again. And this is where he finally gets what, what they think is he's finally broken, right? Like, okay, he's, he's yeah. now he's going to fall in line. And even so much as uh, Jesse, like now in the present day tied up, he's talking to Tulip and he's like, feels like she's like looking at him different but she's not like she she loves him you know and i think that's where well, like, he even has a line i think where he's like he's like you know a lot of people would probably think i'm fucking insane he's like and i admit you you might be the way you're looking at me i'm starting to think you might too you know because i mean like like it's it's a childhood full of such entrenched intense trauma that like you almost wonder like there's no way someone could come out of this unscathed and not 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 sort of fractured mentally somehow you know yeah and it just shows you like what a strong will jesse has and again that's something he gets from both parents because you start to see that like once you get into later volumes and you see what jesse's father went through in vietnam because we get a lot of that too and you see that he was able to go through that hell and come out of the other side still who he is same thing with you know we don't get a lot of a look into like jesse's mother as a little girl but judging by what jesse went through as a kid his mother must have not had an easy time being raised by this fucking awful lady either, you know? Of course. So, like, he he's a product of these two intensely strong human beings. Yeah, I mean, I think that th- this arc just, like, it just it just builds and builds and builds, and then the crescendo is the fight that you saw. I love this Jody. panel, of, of, by the way, yeah. of Jody punching Jesse and the way Jesse's falling out of the panel, you know? Yeah, like it's really dope. Like, yeah. D- Dylan is so good and things like and that. And I man. think that, you know, we talked about, like, the villain of the of, of Preacher, right? It really is God, because that's Jesse's mission, is to get revenge yeah. against God. And, and God on- finally makes his appearance. Yeah, and uh, two two of them love, getting shot love, in the head and then brought back to life. So God's just like manipulating. Him. This is yeah this is the yeah. part where we get like the it's so such a grounded comic, but there is that added like you know fucking me- meta. Yeah, I mean it, it, it literally is God. Like there's no there's no ambiguity that it is God. You know. Yeah. And I do love when when God comes up to Tulip and she's just like you know fucking cut the shit and just tell me what you want. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Like you start to see that, like she, she really, uh, obviously, she believes it because she was dead and she's been brought back, you know. So like she knows something's up, but she's also starting to realize and sort of like understand why why Jesse is on this mission because she's the first one to meet God, um, you know, j- before even Jesse, and she's the first one to realize that he's like you said, he's a manipulative child almost, you know, like he's trying to get what he wants by by lying and conniving and mm-hmm. like you know backstabbing and like it it's interesting because like like when you look at like greek mythology the gods are like that you know but when you look at like the way like christianity teaches god he's unfallible but this is a god that has a lot of human traits and it may it that makes more sense to me if if you're going to portray a god because 
he's creating you like you know like in his image he, yeah. He's, yeah he very much is a human in in the way he acts you know and like and i love that jesse is going out there and he's gonna treat him like well if you're gonna be a piece of shit i'm gonna hold you accountable to it you know like you would anybody else and that really is the core of the story like you said that is jesse's mission to go after god yeah yeah no this arc i mean just like and then uh I mean, let's let's uh, start talking about the where it goes from here too. Like, he eventually gets, you know, like, I oh, hold on, I gotta share this panel. I love this, this one right here. Yeah, I love that. Dude, just a strut, bro. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's like, he's about to kick fucking ass, and dude. he just fucking annihilates every motherfucker that. that dude, it is so ass. it's so amazing, man. Like, yeah. First of all, I love the way Tulip like fucking bashes TC's fucking head, and she says. Because the first thing that that TC does say to Tulip is like, oh, the coup's got a name? Like, such an insulting, like, degrading fucking thing to say to a woman. <laughs> and I love when, when she finally gets her hands on him, she, she, he is like, the, the coup has a name, you piece of shit, and it's Tulip, you know? <laughs> and he's crawling on the floor, and, like, he's like, I, he's got a great line to her. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ, I think these are my brains leaking out of my nose. Because it's not even blood, it's like gunk yeah. coming out of his nose. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just like, and then where do you go from there? Like, again, like kind of how volume one ended volume, volume two, just that arc that could have been like a good, like send off, mm-hmm. right? Like that really could, I'm not saying that they intended. And obviously there's, there could have been, there is, it was more story to tell, but that was, would have been a very good, like ending kind of, or that could have been like an ending to a season or whatever, you know? Yes, correct. Um, but then they, you know, like you, they go forward and now that they're free, you know, we don't see it, but he that robs a bank or he, he gets a bank teller to give him money by using the word of God. So he robs the bank, but he kind of didn't rob it because they just handed it to him. And and now yeah. they're kind of like living a little bit. Well, of yeah, you got to keep in mind. We, we also learn a little tidbit that uh, Jesse was a car thief when he was when he first. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's how they made their money. They would they would steal high end cars. And and but it. I mean, not that I'm uh, condoning like fucking car theft, you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, I, know. I think they were doing it more out of like a spirit of rebellion and like, you know, I mean, they weren't, they never hurt anybody. You know, Jesse was never like a strong arm robber or like a carjacker. He just would see fancy cars, steal them and sell them and they would just live their life, you know? Like they just, basically like you start to see that like Jesse and Tulip are like literally like the definition of like star-crossed lovers, you know? And Yeah, they're and, like, like Bonnie and Clyde yeah very great 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 example right there man i i wouldn't have i couldn't put it better myself that's yeah and i didn't i forgot we didn't even mention i'll mention real quick is that the reason that he leaves tulip is because when they're on the run they're doing what they're doing they're about to go to san francisco they're about to go as as far he's about to marry her and then i love she walks away from the bench i love that panel and and he's sitting there all of a sudden next panel uh jody yeah and TC like pulls back a little bit and yeah. jody and tc jody and tc are right next to him and that's the only way he can save her is he just has to leave and go back yeah. home and that's where he be he finally gives in he becomes the preacher that he is and that leads us into yeah and, and it, it, that, you know good point you brought that up man because it shows you like jesse loves her so much that he's willing to go back to this life that he really fought so hard to get away from just to save her you yeah. know and that's the reason this is called until the end of the world, because that's the yeah. line he says to her, he'll love you till the end of the world. And that's what yeah. I think he says it in volume one. And she's like, I can't believe you fucking said that. And yeah. She like get, cuts him off. She's like, you don't have the right to say that anymore. You know? Yeah. So like to but get that. Finally kind of, realizes, yeah. Yeah. And getting that closure, you know, and like now she, now they're fully back together, fully back in it. And then we get Cassidy coming back in the picture uh, with this next story arc. We meet air star. What's the, the organization that they work for the grail the grail oh that's right the grail um and then I mean, there's so many characters within this arc the two the two cops that that are like middle manning like drug deals for that fucking arc. jesus Assad. yeah jesus Assad. which is oh, dude, he's such a creepy looking motherfucker you know steve dylan yeah. just really he really goes all out when he designs like these characters like you just you yeah i, I felt gross looking at that dude you know and like you, yeah you, same thing with like the 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 before star becomes the the leader of the grail like the 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 all father i think they call yeah yeah, yeah the all the all father is the thing yeah. yeah he's like this like fat like like gluttonous person who like he just eats and i remember like he has someone line like he finishes eating he's like um bring me a bucket i need to vomit you know what i mean oh, like that's so, <laughs> it's so nasty dude yeah 
Yeah, but I like Dylan, this. Dylan excelled at, at at drawing grotesque images, you know. And I mean, look at the way he draws Jesse's uh, grandmother. Look at the way he draws he, he draws the All Father, like fucking um, the R face, like mm -hmm. TC, like all these characters, man. Yeah, and I love that but, we're getting like these. Like, there's a couple it's, again with this next art or the back end of this trade, this volume is there's multiple stories going on at once uh cassidy's back in the picture cassidy is now like and uh he's trying to get revenge against somebody for giving his old girlfriend that he was living with drugs right like she over yeah she overdosed. those cops are trying to do they're trying to get the drugs to get to jesus to who's who's like got this fucking party the massive orgies fucking just like a bunch of disgusting debauchery going <laughs> like a pile on. Of someone right. in a yeah. fucking armadillo and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> Just like all sorts of grossness. You got fucking yeah. Air Star with the Grail coming. He's trying to like overtake them. So like, and then Jesse is in the mix with Tulip. Like, there's just so many moving pieces, and it doesn't even feel erratic though. It feels no. like everything is moving like with such a synchronicity that it all when it all comes to a head, it's just like holy crap, you know, in this fucking arc. And Tulip has just so many fucking great moments. I, I I really think, like, especially at that party. She really starts to come into her own as a character. Yeah. And, I mean, um, not that she always wasn't, but you, she she really becomes very defined, I think, in these two arcs. Agreed. And especially when, once we get to her origin a little bit later on, where you, like, see, like, where she came from and who her father was and how he raised her and explains a lot. But... She really grows a lot as a character, uh, specifically, I think, with, like, you know, dying and being brought back to, by God and all these and seeing where Jesse come from. I think I think she finally is able to sort of forgive him, you know, which is a very important part of the story. Yeah. And I think also after this volume, she's as invested in this mission as Jesse is. And I think it's it's personal for her as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, she it's, not, it's no longer just Jesse's mission. It's theirs. Like, it, it's like it. Especially when they kiss at the end, uh, with uh, it's such a beautiful panel, man. Like with the fire burning in the back, it's like to me, it's like the fire represents oh, yeah. like their passion and their love, and also like their their purging of the past, but specifically Desi, like finally being able to burn this this past that has been haunting him. You know, like it's 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 a minor vic. It's the first victory that Jesse really has on this mission. I think. I agree. oh yeah for sure, and I mean he even like. He doesn't, and he's so protective of her, like we talked about when he went oh. back home, that he tells her she can't come on this yeah. mission. You know, which is Julia is a fucking tough chick. So yeah, like, she ain't he, having it, dude. She's like, no, yeah. I'm going. You know, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have to fucking. And, deal and with you it. start to see in this too that like you need her around because she's a fucking badass herself, and like she she can take care of business. Like I understand where Jesse's coming from because he loves her, but like. And that's a lesson he slowly learns too, is that he needs to learn to trust her because she, she's as she's as tough as he is, and there's a reason that they connect so well. Yeah. And I, dude, one one thing I love that was so tender was when he finally, after he kills Jody and chokes him, and Grandma is burned, and he he doesn't remember he, uh, during that whole fight he still thinks Tulip is dead, and when she finally emerges and he sees her and he's like, how? And he's like, I don't care, I don't give a damn. Like you know, like he just. He's just so happy that she's alive that he doesn't even question like how she's still alive. Yeah, I really and, and just to you know for context, that's Air Star. This is the new antagonist that basically takes us through. He, I, I'd say he's the co-antagonist because he's I would going, say so too, right? Because he's going after Jesse. They're obviously trying to protect the the bloodline of, of, of Christ. Christ, right? Um, <laughs> so it's. It's just an interesting like parallel of like these two men each on their own mission. Airstar is going after Jesse for something. Jesse's going after God for something, and then eventually this will come to a head. But yeah. Airstar's story too is just uh just how we're introduced to him, where he's like he sends out one of the guys to go get him a hooker, and then it yeah. ends up being one of the it ends up being one of those two uh, cops that I was talking about, like that are looking for the heroin and. He ends up getting fucking, he ends up getting fucked by that guy, you know, in the alley. Yeah, yeah. And then he's it's like, time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's super, and he's like super pissed throughout. And like, you know, like, and I, I, that That's continues what, to play out. I'm glad you brought that up because like, I love like, like the degradation that you just keep, the, the progressive like shit that just happens to star 
yeah. is so funny because he's such a vile person. But so much shit happens to him, like, like throughout the entire story. Like, like I'm just thinking now, like, what's coming up ahead? He gets his fucking dick chewed off, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, he gets his fucking yeah. hand chopped off, like eaten off by cannibals. Yeah, you know? he's like, just he continues to just go get put through the meat grinder, dude. Throughout the yeah. rest of the series, but even so, because I mean, he's essentially a Nazi. You know what I mean? Essentially, like, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like his his political and like moral moral barometer is completely fascist, and he's. He's awful, man. Like he, like I said, Jody was a bastard. He almost makes Jody look like a decent human being, like like the way that Star is, you know. Yeah, but you don't even get that. You don't even get that in this first introduction of him, though. No, like, no, you, no. You don't start to see that until we get further into the series. But you do. I mean, he obviously he's a piece of shit. Obviously, he's going yeah. after Jesse. But I think we see it uh, more towards the end of this arc because there's a great moment where they're at that party, Jesus Assad's party. Jesse's going after him to get the, the revenge for Cassidy. Tulip's there. Cass, Cassidy's there. Airstar goes there to look for Jesse and or sends people to get him. And uh, Cassidy has a moment where you see what he's really about, right? Like he he talks about not caring about people because they always die because he's been around for such a long time. Yeah. But he sacrifices himself and says he's Jesse. So the Grail take him instead. What they do to him. What what Cassidy gets put through, yeah, is like, I mean, he can't die, so you know what I mean. Like, what they they continue to like, just like keep. I mean, what do they do? They keep stabbing him, right, or shooting him repeatedly. Yeah, they have that one mob hitman that's sort of like shooting him, stabbing him, shooting him in the dick. You know, like yeah, like basically, like the think of any way you could torture someone who can't be killed but can still feel pain, and you they do it to him. You know. And you start to see that, like, what a, what a sadistic organization the Grail is, and yeah. like, it's you know, it 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 mirrors like he- like the organization of heaven, which is also like you know not what you would think. You know, it's very controlling, very conniving. Yeah, yeah, and, and like uh, you know, know, the the Grail doesn't even like Star doesn't even really believe in any of this shit. But no. what Star wants is to control the world. You know, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Which is why he wants Jesse. Right, he wants to be. Able yeah, to he doesn't give a fuck about him. God or religion or 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 save. You know, like he he wants Jesse as as just another uh, another you know pawn in his fucking chess game that he's playing with everything. You know, because because Star is someone that wants to rule the world like in the typical like men- megalomaniac sort of way. Is that he's just someone that he's a fucking fascist. You know, like he 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 wants to run everything. Yeah, and, to, and you know, and this is where Jesse also learns that the the Grail's after him. So it's not just, like, that we know as as the reader. Like, he knows, too, and that's where he finds Featherstone and uh, the other yeah. dude. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, yeah, the one that Jesse says to go count all the grains of sand. That's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. What a, what a fucking crazy way to punish somebody. He uses... But, you know, it of- shows you that, that Jesse has an impulsive side that he that he needs to rein in sometimes, you know? Because, like, like that guy... Yeah, he's working for the Grail, but I don't think he deserved that. Like the people that are working for the Grail on that level, like might not. First of all, they, he certainly doesn't know what Star is up to, you know. No, no. And no, I no, think cause... that they they have more altruistic, especially him. Like I, he probably thinks he's doing something good, and you know he sees Jesse as as he's been painted as a villain, so he's just he's just being manipulated by Star. He's just a, a pawn, and Jesse. You really shouldn't have done that to him, you know. But it's a testament to Ennis as a writer to show you that Jesse is still flawed too, you know. Yeah, I mean, look, this—that's how the book ends too—is with him counting. He's like, he's got nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, ten thousand. He loses count and he has to start over. Yeah, fuck, dude. And, and you're just like, yeah. it's just what a what a crazy way to kind of punish or slash get revenge at somebody, you know. And um, I mean, that's what leads us into the hunt for Cassidy and the like Jesse's yeah. now on the and he knows the girls after him, Tulip knows, but they don't they don't know why. Yeah. And and where the story continues to lead us forward. Like, now, like you said, this is when we meet the grill because the grill was hinted at way back in volume one when we talked about it. There's a there's a one line one of the angels says he's like, fuck, the grail's aware of this. Oh shit. And that's all we really get. So you're like, what's the grail? And why why is heaven? afraid of them you know like what what could they be and then you start to see like like the grail really is sort of like this organization that does control everything you know you know it's it's a it's a conspiracy it's almost like a new world order sort of illuminati 
organization with a very Christian bent to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that just, I mean, I know we talked mostly about the first part of this trade, but that was really like, to me, like it almost, it almost like it calms down. I know it's not, yeah. it doesn't really. But I mean, that that it's... that's the narrative pace that Preacher has that I love too. It's like, it's very like, it, it allows you to still get a very intense story because trying to match the intensity of what happened in Angelville yeah. with a second part of the story arc, it just wouldn't work, man. You need to sort of let the reader and let the characters breathe by, but still sort of push the story along. And I think that's, that was a very smart way to do it. Like, it's like, you haven't pumped the brakes, but you've let go of the accelerator a little bit. You know, if you get what I mean, and like yeah. you're sort of like like driving at a more even pace. The narrative is going before we get later. You know, you know, later we're gonna floor it fucking again, and things get fucking ratcheted again. So, like to me, preacher has this very pace. It's never slow, but it's like you know, it's like a it literally is a roller coaster ride, man. You it know? is definitely, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited. And I'm like, so glad we're doing this. Like reading it again, I'm like, of course, this has to be my favorite comic. I could talk about this for hours, and I get so much every time I talk about it with someone that I've never talked about it with before. And uh, and something when I read it again, it's, it's great, man. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to to. It was hard for me to not start reading volume three, but I I oh, always yeah, worried same, like if I, if I don't, I, I I try to read it as close to when we're gonna talk as possible, so that yes, it's same. super fresh in my mind. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, it was hard for this not to be fresh on my mind because I mean, I think I finished it. What I finished it. I mean, we're talking maybe five days ago. So yeah, I, yeah. I did read it like early before we were going to record. Cause I think, I think originally we were supposed to record this like three days ago, but we pushed off yeah. recording, but this volume has always stuck in my mind. When I think of preacher, this is the story that I think of first is same is angel. Yeah, book, actually you know? same, man. Same. So it's, it's... I, I was super stoked to like, to kind of talk. Well, I was, I was very stoked to talk this particular volume, but I'm very excited that we're doing all of preacher. And I knew yeah. it. I knew it the minute, I think like halfway through us talking preacher volume one, I was like, all right, we're probably going to end up having to like do all of this, you know, like how do we, how do we stop? You know, and I yeah. and I don't think enough people are talking about it because now, you, it's so. a book you can't stop reading. So like, no, it's addictive. It's very addictive. Yeah. There's certain series where like, if I start it, I'm not stopping till I'm done. You know, uh, so yeah. like, I, even though I have to like kind of ease my way in through this so that it's you know like we talk over the next few weeks about it, but I can't wait to get into you know some of the later volumes. And if you guys have not read Preacher yet, go pick this fucking book up. It is one of yeah. the best series in the history of comics. It's it's one of those series that, well, like we said, when you pick it up, you won't want to put it down. But also one that kind of has is timeless. You know, like it's yeah, it's a it's a book that although it came out in the mid '90s, it doesn't feel like it came out in the mid '90s at no, all. No, no, and it's I, I mean to me, it's up there uh, as a defining title for Vertigo, like Sandman or Hellblazer. You know, like I mean, I I would say like the, I mean, obviously Sandman is always what people are going to associate with Vertigo. And rightfully so, because that's another amazing series. But if, if Sandman didn't appeal to you, this is a nice alternative because it's it's as good, but it's different tonally, but still has that sort of rich mythology uh, that that only a series that Vertigo do, did really has. Because I mean, it, it's it's the power of having one writer writing the entire thing. Yeah, and, uh, unlike, unlike fan man, other than the one shots that you get that flesh out like star and and because there are you know there there are there, there, when preacher was being done they still did one shots and little side stories that sort of like were focused on there's like a whole issue about uh, an adventure with J, uh, with Jody and TC you get one about star but it was all Dylan and Ennis from start to finish yeah and I know the color changes at one point and uh, it'll be interesting because I don't want to look up when. I just want to read it and because I don't remember when Ma Matt Hollingworth drops. Yeah, but he me does. Yeah, me. Um, but for the most part, it really is the same creative team, which I mean, that's amazing, man. You know, and like it's something you don't see. Think of, no, man. You, know? you definitely don't see that these no, days. No, it's it like Hundred Bullets. Brian Ezrello yeah. and Eduardo Rizzo. The entire Hundred Issues was by them. Why the Last Man was all right. I think maybe no. Why the last man had a, a couple artists actually. I, I I'm wrong on that, but for, oh, the, for most the most part, part, it was yeah, yeah. You know, like in a lot of the Vertigo series were like that, where it was 
one creative team, one creative vision that saw it through from the beginning to the end. And I think that like, that's, which I'm just going to go. I mean, I, I know black label is, is sort of the replacement and black label has been doing some amazing things, but I know, it's but not, it's, it's not this man. No. Cause all they're doing is they're doing more mature takes on the DC characters. And like, that's not really what I want to see. If anything, there yeah, should have been a DC black label and a vertigo. You know? Exactly, because I mean, we talk a lot about all the violence and like fucked up humor in Preacher, but it's it's not shock for shock's value. I mean, yeah, there's shocking moments that you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I just saw a fucking you know guy get his dick chewed off by a dog. But yeah. like, it's balanced by like this deep writing. I mean, at its heart, Preacher is a love story, and spe- that's why I love this arc so much because like that's when you realize like like. This preacher is nothing without the love, uh, the love story of Tulip and Jesse. That's what grounds it. That's what centers it. Mm-hmm. That's what gives it its emotional core, and that's why it can work. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, that's a so, yeah. great spot to end this part of our, our preacher talk on. And uh, if you guys haven't, if you guys saw this one, you didn't see the first part. Check the first part out, and uh, you know, c- continue to join us as we go through this fucking amazing series. And and then always follow us. Make sure you follow Manny. His links are down below. Follow Comic Lounge. Our l- links are down below as well. Hit the subscribe button so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. Peace out, guys.